Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Sorry about my voice. I have been sick all weekend. It was bad. I was going to try to do a live tonight. I was going to try to do it last night, but I thought I'd go into a coughing spree during the video and I wouldn't be able to uh, do anything about it as it would be live. And so I didn't. Um, there's a few points I want to go over why we're looking at September the 11th and uh, found a little bit of something that I wanted to bring to you so you could look at it. Uh, always appreciate all the comments and the help that we're getting towards this. Um, I had a, a, a guy sent me an email and he was defining to me the bride and the saint. Now, I'm very careful when discussing the saint because I don't want the saint to feel like they have missed out on something. Um, they are living their part. They believe in their part. They believe in the mark that took place. It's almost exactly three and a half years ago, which, by the way, is for, on September 11th, it will be three and a half years when it started on March 11th, which I thought was pretty incredible. Um, but we're not in the seals. That wasn't the mark. Uh, so there's these people that are just insistent. And, and here's the thing. They are insistent on so many things other than the blood of Christ. And we were discussing in this email back and forth, and I asked him a question. Do you think it's possible for a saint who's entrenched in their belief that you have to work and you have to be good and you have to do everything right, and if you don't understand the way I do, um, you're going to miss this rapture and you're going to go into the tribulation. If you, I mean, there's, there's just a whole slew of different concepts. You can't know the day of the hour. Um, the earth is flat. Uh, I don't care if the earth is flat or round. I, I really don't. It, I don't care either way. I think it's round, but I'm not going to argue about it because it's irrelevant. Um, Jesus' blood is the most relevant. So we were discussing, and then it reminded me of a story that I had heard before about a guy named Martin Luther. Uh, you might want to go look him up, Google him. Uh, I believe he posted 95 or 99 reasons on the wall of the Catholic Church as to why they were wrong about all of the things that they were doing to secure their salvation in the Lord, and he literally was in this monastery every day, beating himself, reading the Bible, uh, starving himself, and doing all kinds of self-harm to get right with God, and he continued to read the Bible, and the Holy Spirit revealed to him that none of that was relevant. None of it was relevant whatsoever. It didn't help him in any kind of way. Everything that he did was for nothing um, because it didn't save him. And so what we have here now is a saint that is working so hard to get into heaven. But Martin Luther became a bride when he walked away from all of that, realizing that he was wrong. And he learned that as he was studying and as he was inflicting self-harm on himself to try to make himself pure and whatever he thought he was doing, um, along the way, the Holy Spirit revealed to him that it's only through the blood of Christ. You don't have to do anything. You will. And that's the difference. The wheat and the tares grow together. We're identical in every way. You can't tell us apart. That's why the warning came out. Don't go out into the field and remove the tares because you might accidentally pull up some wheat. Leave it alone. Let them grow up together. At the end, we will see the difference. God knows the difference. And so the question I pose to him is, do you think that you could convince a saint that is doing all of these things to ensure their salvation, to being good, from being good, to donating money, to doing everything that they're doing, do you think it's possible that one of them or some of them might change their mindset like Martin Luther did? Martin Luther became a bride. 
um, when he realized that everything he was doing was for naught. And I think it's very difficult because even Jesus, when the rich man, the rich kid came up to him and says, I've been doing everything right since my childhood. I'm perfect in every way. I haven't broke the law. I haven't done anything wrong. And Jesus told him to go sell his goods and follow him. And he wouldn't do it and sadden Jesus because, of course, Jesus wants um, everyone to trust and rely solely on the blood. Now, I told you before, so so when dealing with saints who are so entrenched in their belief that they must, they must, they must, I don't like getting into too much of an argument with them. I will show them what I know, but at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit that will show them that they're... And it's and it's some serious stuff. I mean, it's like pre-terrorists just believe that we're already in the millennium. We have been for a thousand years. But go through your Bible. Simple math. Simple math shows you that we're at the 6,000-year mark and that we're about to go into the millennium. Simple understanding of... World. I mean, if they knew that the flood occurred on October the 31st when there was only eight people that came off of that boat... And uh, history from every nation has shown that, that there was a major event that took place on All Saints Day, November the twenty, uh, November the first, and October the thirty first. If that made it through, you would think a rapture of a thousand years ago, in the year one thousand, according to what we know is one thousand twenty three. Let's say. That event would have been recorded by everyone because it clearly teaches that every tribe and every nation and every tongue, it's everybody from around the world, and it numbers how many they are. Salvation remembers for us. It is not for the, uh, it, it does not exist for the angels, the fallen angels or the angels that are in heaven. Salvation does not exist for them. I showed you uh, last video that, um, there is a uh, discussion that these fallen angels have had with Enoch, and Enoch goes to God, and God says, no, ever, never, ever, no. They don't carry the DNA like we do, because they're a mixture of two different races, the fallen angels and humans. They don't carry that DNA, so they don't, salvation is not available to them. It's available to everyone in the sound of my voice that is listening to this video and you need to cast off everything and accept the lord and that's it all right let me go into some videos all right where are we at right now we're coming up on september the 11th which will be a little 28. now a lot of people i've noticed are moving things around, of course, to the moon. I do not follow the moon for anything. The only the only purpose the moon holds is for a blood moon, a blue moon. These are very important signs that God gave us for the moon, but they do not set the head of the year. They do not set the head of each month. They cannot. Remember, Jesus was baptized on a little one, which everyone agrees that he did, and you count 40 days exactly, you will land on Tishri 10. The same thing happens. No matter what date you choose, you have to count 40 days. The little one is August the 15th. And if you count 40 days, you will land on September the 24th. So it goes, Jesus was, was uh, fasting. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, for 40 days. <clears throat> I hope I can get through this. Talking is very difficult. Jesus was baptized, and for 40 days, he, he, I'm sorry, and then for 40 days, he fasted. He fasted from a little one to Tishri 10, which Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. Jesus was born on tabernacles. Five days later, on September the 29th, going into September the 30th. So, if you use the moon, you will, of course, come between a little one and Tishri 10. You cannot reach it. You will wind up with 37 days because they're using the moon. You simply use the moon if they want to. 
and count backwards and you will not land on August the 15th. It won't happen. It's actually 37 days or 38 days, something to that effect. They're off by a couple of days and they don't know how to regulate that. And I say that the, uh, and I showed you several times, the use of the new moon was brought about in 400 BC um, to the Jews by the, I think it was the Romans that uh, took them over and forced them to worship the moon. And I just, I don't, I don't believe that the moon has anything to do with that personally. So, but again, like I've said before, and uh, Cool Cat hates it when he hears it, it is not a salvational issue. I've been watching a lot of Cool Cat lately. Uh, uh, his videos are astounding. He does some deep dive study, and uh, I really, really am uh, enjoying his videos. He's doing such a good job, and my hat's off to uh, his name is Kelly. My hat's off to Kelly for, for the work he's done. I really do enjoy it. Um, his videos, he doesn't hold any punches, and I like that about him. He tells exactly how it is, and I like that about him. He does not skirt around a conversation, and I like that about him. So um, go subscribe to his channel. Uh, it's called Cool Cat, and uh, and listen to what he's saying because it's he's spot on with except for the moon, <laughs> except for the moon. He's spot on, and again, like I said. The moon is not thinking the earth is flat or round is irrelevant. It's not a salvational issue until you make it one. You make it one when you say, pre terrorist, no man knows the day or the hour, uh, all these different uh, groups of people. You make yourself into a saint when you make the comment that if you don't believe the way I do, if you don't think the earth is flat, that means you're not reading the Bible and you're not saved. When you make those kind of comments, you have classified yourself as a saint. A bride will never make those comments, and I never do. Uh, you can believe that the earth is flat all you want. You just can't tell me I have to or I'm not saved. So I will never tell you that because you think the earth is flat that you're wrong. Uh, I will tell you that we will find out here shortly. And when we get there, maybe the Earth is flat. And I look down, I'm like, whoa, the only planet in the entire solar system that we can see with our own eyes out of our own telescopes, that every single planet has a rotation, including the sun. All of them are round, except the Earth. It's flat. Maybe it's not a salvational issue. Until you make it one. Don't make it one. Don't push those kind of points to the point where you make the statement. If you don't think this was the mark, and I've heard so many um, channels say this, and it set people off and, and made them scared to death for their souls. If you don't think this was the mark, then uh, you're going to hell. If you took that, you're going to hell. Come on. <laughs> Come on. A little common sense. It's simple. It didn't happen. It, it, it just any more than the barcode, the social security number, and uh, all these the, the, everything that they brought out, credit cards with a little chip, and all these things that they brought out. I've, I've been around. I'm almost sixty. I've been around for a minute, and I saw all these things come out. And I was there when everybody was like, "This has to be the mark." And at first, I'm like, "Maybe it is." It wasn't. Neither was this that they put into everybody. It was not the mark. When the mark, but, but how do you tell a saint? You're crazy. That wasn't the mark. Stop looking for the mark. You can't say that to them because that's what they have to worry about, right? That's what they're scared of. And they have every right to be because they need to avoid that when the rapture occurs. All right, let me get back into this. We are now, let's see, this is September the 3rd, which makes it eight days away. So we are now on Elul 20. Today is Elul 20. In eight days, it will be September the 11th. I want you to notice something that I noticed while doing this. Um, this math, I do this all the time. This is kind of my thing. I look at these numbers. And uh, this timeline has been uh for me a godsend because it really has clarified when everything is when it lands 
I would have never in a million years known that um, Rosh Hashanah fell on September the 15th. I would have never known that except I found Exodus 12. And the new head of the year is 182 days earlier, which is March the 17th up there at the top. That is the beginning of the year. That is the first day of the year. I would have never known. I kept researching and trying to figure I have tried to figure out. I didn't really look for the head of the year in my other timelines. I listened to other preachers. I studied the Bible. I wrote the times down. But I never really knew where to begin because everybody had a different idea of where the beginning was. And so in the last three, four years, I've been working on this. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. I'm stuffed up and messed up. The fourth star, Algenib, does in fact skirt along the horizon in Israel two times a year. It does this on a Elul 31. Yes, there are 31 days in Elul on September the 14th. The next day is the new year, September the 15th. It does it back here as well. It happens twice a year. The four star of Pegasus, named Algenib, skirts along. This is what they were looking for. They weren't looking for a sliver of a moon at the beginning of every single month to know when they start their month. That would be silly. The moon only comes out every 29 and a half days. It does not match anything whatsoever. This is what they were looking for, the four star Algenib. And it also happens to be the day of equal parts. It also is the day that Lazarus died. And when I start doing the math, and I know Lazarus was in the grave for four days, and then I do the math, Lazarus was resurrected. I know that when you touch a dead body, which Mary and Martha buried him, they sent messengers to find Jesus. They bury him on the 16th. They are unclean for three days. I know that. They are, or they are unclean for seven days, but they have to perform a ceremony after the third day. They can't go around anyone for three days until they perform this ceremony. But on the fourth day, you will see them around Jesus as he resurrects Lazarus. But they have to complete those other four days. So Mary and Martha do, in fact, complete those other four days. Mary and Martha are clean after seven days. And when we do the math, you find out that... Jesus had a meal with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Just one day after that, he could not have had this meal at any point sooner than this because they were unclean for seven days. Could not have had a meal with them. Then we learn that on Nisan 10, <clears throat> Jesus' triumphal entry. What does Nisan 10 match? If you go forward, Nisan 10 matches uh, right here. Tishri 10, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the day Jesus rode in on the donkey. Back here, four star Algenib on the 14th. The day of creation began on September the 11th. Now, this is what I found. I did a little math. I don't know how important it is. Um, I'm going to have to keep looking at it. But at midnight on September the 11th, going into September the 12th, it is exactly three and a half days to the very moment that the asteroid or the comet child leaves the constellation Virgo. And at that very moment, at 6 o'clock in the morning, on the 15th, I might have said the 17th, on the 15th, at that very moment at 6 a.m., which is three, three, exactly three and a half Days earlier, this comet Nishimuri, I think it is, comes into Virgo at that exact moment. How do you? These comets have been sitting out in space forever, and all of a sudden they just decide to start moving here recently. And then one comes into Virgo, and one leaves Virgo at the exact same moment on September the fifteenth at six o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. If you go back three and a half days from six a.m. September the 15th, you will land at September the 11th at midnight going into September the 12th, three and a half days earlier. I found that to be a little uh, nugget that I found in there. So here we are in a little 20. We're just eight days away from September the 11th. For me, September 11th is a very high watch day. Um, as you look, oh, my, my head is exploding. 
As you look in the Bible, I've said this many times, always try to find the bride, the saint, and the Jew. You almost always will, or you probably always will. I just take some studying to figure it out. Jacob, Leah, Rachel. Leah is the bride. Rachel is the wife. Both of them wind up with <coughs> Jacob. He winds up with Leah. Seven days later, he gets Rachel. Seven days. That's very important. And then seven years, the work must be done to keep Rachel, right? That's the deal that, that he made. You can have Rachel now, but you will work for seven years. You'll see this with Barabbas, the thief on the cross that reviled Jesus, and the thief on the cross that accepted Jesus. Barabbas is the bride. Not a single word. Barabbas didn't do anything. Nothing. Everyone looks at the thief on the cross, the one that uh, accepted Jesus. He's the saint. He's the one that's in tribulation. He's hanging on a cross. He is in tribulation. So you have your bride, Barabbas. You have your saint, the thief on the cross that accepts him. And you have the Jew who doesn't accept him all the way through the tribulation period until the end when they finally will. Then you have Noah. Noah takes on all three. Noah is told, get into the ark. And he does. And the door stays open for how long? Seven days. The door stays open for seven days. Now Noah becomes a saint. The door is shut. He is in Jesus, but he's going through tribulation. At the end, just as in the days of Noah, on 11-11, November the 11th, and it never changes, ever. It's always the same date. This timeline is always the same. It never moves. Just like your birthday never changes each year. It might change the day, but it doesn't change uh, the date. It always stays the same. At the end, what happens? He's on the ark for one year and 10 days. I'm going to show you something about those 10 days and, and what it might possibly mean. Why the extra 10 days? Why did he spend the extra 10 days on the ark? Why is it that from... You have the star of Algina skirting along the horizon on a specific date, and 182 days later, you have it skirting along the horizon again, marking the head of the year, or the last Sabbath, as it were. But then, 10 days later, for the Day of Equal Parts to take place. The Day of Equal Parts happens back in March, on March 16th, along with the, the four-star Algina skirting along the horizon, but doesn't do that in September. In September... Something changes. It's moved 10 days. And I think that's what those 10 days are for. Why Noah was on that ark that extra 10 days. And I'll show that to you as well. All right, let me get back to this. Ugh. Sorry. All right, so we're quickly approaching September the 11th. And I don't know if it's September the 10th before this starts. I don't see a four and a half day thing. I see a lot of three and a half. So uh, it could be September the 11th at midnight. It could be September the 10th at nightfall. I don't know. We're just looking. And here's the thing. Amos 3, 7. I will do nothing lest I warn the prophet of the saints first. We are all very in tune right now. All of us watchers have been looking and searching for something like what we're seeing right now. And, pa and uh, Patrick over at uh, Hourly Watch has found it. And we're all just looking at it, and, and, and uh, either some are agreeing with it, very few, but I've seen a few disagree with it. Listen, the Revelation 12 sign did happen six years ago. The beginning of the creation of this planet did happen 6,000 years ago. God did create the planet in six days. The number of man is six. Man was created on the sixth day, and on the seventh day, God rested. So it's a good argument for the rapture to occur before, just be prior to the first day of creation, which happened on September the 11th, 6,000 years ago. Now, it is the year 5993 from the date Adam sinned. From that date, it's 5993. We have seven years to go to complete the 6,000 years um, since Adam sinned. And then... A thousand years of the millennium. So let me 
get out of this. Let's see. There, yeah, it's Nishimura. Look down there. That's Eastern Standard Time. That's my time here in Florida. September the 15th at 6 a.m. Nishimura just crosses into Virgo. Right up there. Oh, sorry. Uh, 6 a.m. September the 15th. The moon is not at her feet yet. Do we go before she travails? Does the moon, is the moon used in this case to witness to her travail? As the moon travels down her and reaches her foot, it will become September the 18th, 19th. But Nishimura comes into Virgo at 6 a.m. on this day, three and a half days earlier than this, will be midnight on September the 11th. That's the date I'm kind of looking at. Child leaves Virgo also at the same exact moment Nishimura comes into Virgo. The child leaves Virgo on the 15th at 6 a.m. took me six minutes to get to uh, find it, but at 6 a.m. the child is leaving Virgo right down there. So Nishimura is at the top, child is leaving Virgo at the bottom, and it's all taking place at the exact same moment at 6 a.m., which I thought was incredible. Again, Patrick found this, and we're all just kind of jumping in, trying to see what we can find, and that's what I found. <coughs> okay. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. God is going to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. You'll just be sitting there looking at this, looking at that, and a wave of understanding will come over you. That is the Holy Spirit. It happens all the time. I've even watched Cool Cat. Make the statement. I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the answer was right there in front of me. A lot of these watchers, Dr. Barry, all of these amazing watchers, uh, Tony over at the Cataclysm, Tony Early. I've even seen, I mean, not even, I've seen all of them do this. Um, Will over at Worship and Watch, um, Ikra Symphony. These, this wave of understanding comes over you, and this is coming from the Holy Spirit. And if you're listening, and if you're in tune to want to understand this will work out this way and then we bring it to you as we we see it i believe it's the holy spirit guiding us the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that they may run that readeth it for the vision is yet for an appointed time there's that appointed time and that's what dr barry has been saying all along is that it's an appointed time it's a moedim um, I think, it, I, I don't know if this has to happen on one of the seven feasts, or, or, and this is what I've argued many times in the past, the date was set in stone before the creation of the universe. God already knew what day. He's God. He's omnipotent. He knows everything. There isn't anything he doesn't know. He already knew you, me, and all of us. And so it's incredible that uh, he had this date, and here we are trying to figure it out. And I think that's just proof of who we are. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end it shall speak. You see that? But at the end it shall speak. That means, and not lie, at the end, look at this sign that they see in the heavens now. The Revelation 12 sign 2.0, I guess. Or, or uh, the, And then I saw another wonder in heaven. Maybe this is the other wonder that's in heaven. And it says, of course, though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely come and will not tarry. It never did tarry. We just didn't know when it was. But it never tarried. Um, it never, uh, it, it was never God sitting up in a corner, uh, you know, on his throne, chewing his nails, waiting for the last one of us to accept him. That's never what it was about. There was a specific date that this was going to transpire, and that's when it is going to transpire. Even though it appears to us, because we've been trying to figure this out for so long, it appears as though this is actually coming this time. Um, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. We have faith that this is going to happen. Uh, looking up, looking up has a, uh, is that, oh, that's blue heaven. 
she uh i guess i was watching her video brenda waltner a lot of you know her um I don't agree, of course, with everything that she says, but she does love God, and she is studying, and she has found a sign also in Leo uh, with Venus and Mercury, and uh, I thought this was pretty cool. She had a pretty cool video on this. She said a new sign appearing in the heavens over the Feast of Trumpets, so she this is happening in the Feast of Trumpets, and she also has on there look up. All right, so I went in and, and I put it in here. On 9-11, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I should have put it midnight, right? I don't know why I put 6 a.m. That's four days. I should have put it at midnight going into the 12th. Uh, not much would have changed, though. The movement would have moved a little bit, but you see Venus and Mercury and the sun and Nishimuri actually um, in Leo right there. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so the arguments that we have over it's not a flat earth, we can know the data, all of these are a waste of time, we don't need to do it, I don't get involved with it, um, and the reason I don't is because there's a time where they're going to need the information that we're telling them to stop looking at, which is not productive at all, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. Because these are unprofitable and useless. It's exactly how I feel. There is no reason to argue with them. They will, of course, try to argue with you. They will insist that if you don't listen to them or understand the way they understand or believe that we're at the end of the millennium or believe the earth is flat, they will make statements or believe this was the mark that we got with this shot that we got if you don't believe in what they're saying then you will be the one left behind which is senseless it's unprofitable and it's useless there is no point in these arguments there will come a time where they will have their moment it's just not yet warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time but after that have nothing to do with them you may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. You, how do you know? How do you know? Okay, so we have this conversation going on between um, you can know the day or the hour, or uh, was it Matthew 24, 36? She can't know. You warn them twice, but then after that, don't waste your time. Because their time is next. And if you thought we had scoffers, they're going to have scoffers. The moment this rapture does occur, and they're still here, what's my biggest fear for them is that they think they've lost everything. It's all over with. I might as well receive the mark, and nobody can help me now. God is not going to beat you up for seven years and then cast you into a lake of fire. That is not the point of tribulation. The point of tribulation is to bend your knee, to make you realize that Jesus is all you needed. How long will it take? Again, in every story, Elijah and Elisha, we see a bride and we see a saint. Elisha was right there with Elijah the entire time. The second, I mean the second that Elijah left, Elisha tore off his clothes, he rent his clothes, meaning he tore off his understanding of the way things should have been. Remember, they kept telling him in every town they went to, don't you know that today, today, they're going to take your boss away. They're going to take Elijah out of here. He said it several times. So there were a lot of dates that were set that came and went. But then finally, it did occur. And finally, East, uh, sorry, Elisha saw it happen. Finally, he tore off his clothes. It, I think it's going to take about 2.5 seconds once the rapture occurs. And they see all this stuff going on. He saw it. He knew what happened. That's why I spend my time telling people, if you see me go, because I want them to hang in there. Just hang in there. Because your moment is coming. How long? I don't know. I cannot. And I've been saying this now for a few months. I cannot 
get anyone to prove to me that it's more than a few days or 50 days because God has to turn his attention back to Israel. He doesn't say in there anywhere he's going to turn his attention back to Israel. Oh, and then save a, a great multitude that no man can count. I think the rapture event, there is one rapture. I'll say that a million times. There's only one rapture. But there is a different word used in Second Thessalonians. It is called a gathering. They also go to heaven. They are going to heaven. They will be gathered like a hen gathers her brood under her wing, just like the Bible teaches. They will be gathered. They will be carried to heaven in tribulation. During tribulation, we will be raptured out of imminent danger before tribulation. There is a difference. The, rap the word rapture is different in 1 Thessalonians than the word gather in 2 Thessalonians because we're taken before the seals are open. They're taken after. And that's the one thing I keep seeing over and it's a common thread that I keep seeing over and over again as people are studying this and studying this and they will inevitably say, see right here, we're gathered and then we're taken. And I'm like, you know, gathered is not raptured, right? It's a different word. It is not rapture. That is a different group of people. You have included yourself in a group of people that will be here during the tribulation. And more often than not, they're like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, go look the word up. Just go look it up. And, and Strong's, you can see that the word in First Thessalonians of catching up and the, the word in Second Thessalonians is gathered. It's a completely different word. It's not the same word. So, And I noticed this about some of the best teachers that they are not separating the dispensations properly. They are seeing some verses that would indicate something. And they're like, see, this, see, we're here. And I'm like, that's not us. We have nothing to do with that. The bride says nothing. The bride disappears. The bride, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> the bride is gone. Barabbas said nothing. Leah said nothing. Leah didn't say a word. You think she would have spoke up and said, hey, uh, just so you know. You don't get a surprise in the morning. Uh, I'm the older sister, not a peep. The same thing with uh, Jacob and Esau. Jacob put on that coating, that covering. He put on Jesus, and he tricked his father into getting the blessing. He came. He was the younger, but he came first. The first becomes the elder. Remember, Esau sold his birthright, so he lost out on that. Esau, I mean, Jacob became the elder. So in every story, you can get confused, but you must search out the bride. The bride's usually the quiet one. We know in the ten virgins, I was confused about that. I'm telling you, I was confused about that for so long. I'm like, the five virgins with oil have to be the bride, and then the five without. I said, but where's the Jew? The Jew has to be in here somewhere. And then Wayne over at We Are the Overcomers held a video on it and just blew my mind. He's called a bridegroom when he shows up to pick up the five with oil. All ten fell asleep. If he's called a bridegroom, he already has his bride. He is showing up to pick up the saints. How long after he takes his bride to the point where he picks up the five with oil? I don't know. But now we see our bride. We see our saint and we see our Jew. The Jews have no oil. They do not even believe on Jesus whatsoever. Not whatsoever. They don't even look at him for anything. But the five with oil do. They are the saints. The five virgins with oil are saints. The five virgins without oil are the Jew. The fact that the bridegroom showed up to recover them, he already had his bride. They all ten fell asleep. We found our bride, we found our saint, and we found our Jew. You find that in every story. So when you're doing this study and, and, you, and you go in there and you say something like, well, you see they had oil, so that's the bride, and, you, and, you, and your timeline's off at that point, you can't get the right understanding of when things happen. So let me go back to this. Sorry, I got off the sidetrack there. <clears throat> All right, so we have to avoid foolish conversations and genealogy, all this stuff. We, we just can't get into this kind of argument because, honestly, um, 
there are other people that are watching this and they don't need to see this. I'll show you this again. Rosh Chodesh is what they argue meaning new moon. It does not mean new moon. Rosh Chodesh means new month. It does not mean new moon. So the head of the month, the new month, and every translation in the Bible, remember our Bible was written after Jesus was here. The Torah was written before Jesus was here. The Romans forced them to worship the moon by worshiping the head of the month at the first sliver of the moon. This came, this was a Roman concept. Before that, they were on the Enoch timeline. They were using what they were looking for every year in spring and every year in fall. They were looking for the four-star algenob that skirts along the horizon uh, from the constellation Pegasus. And uh, that's how they knew. Because the day before, it would be under the horizon. The day after, it would be way over the horizon. The day of, it will skirt right along the horizon. And it does this every single, it has since the beginning. <coughs> it does now and it will. You can go into time and date and see the day of equal parts on March the 16th. It never changes. It never, ever changes. So um, the reason our Bible calls it the new moon is because of what the Romans forced them to do in 400 BC. They changed all of the texts. It is not new moon. It is new month. And if you want to go in and look up what the word month means in Hebrew or in Greek, it is not chodesh. It is a completely different word. Just like rapture and gathering are different words, chodesh, and, and I don't recall what it is. I don't, at, at the moment, I don't recall what moon uh, was. Uh, I should have actually taken a picture of it, but moon means a complete has a completely different word assigned to it. Chodesh is month. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. This is the Adam and Eve story. This is where they learned good and bad. This is where they became sinful. They knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice. Imagine this. They're in the garden. God walks with them in the cool of the day every day. And this particular day, God comes. Of course, God already knows because he is God. Jesus comes. And they heard the voice of the Lord. Remember, Jesus is Lord. The Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he punishes them. He gives them their punishment. Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for thou, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Right? But here's where God saves them. God kills an animal sacrifices an animal for them. I imagine that um, I don't know what kind of animal it was, but I imagine that uh, they understood at this moment that there would be a sacrifice made on their behalf. When we get to heaven, Adam and Eve will be there. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. They were covered. They were, they were covered. They were uh, sins forgiven. Their sin was eating an apple. Imagine our sins. So much worse than that. So much worse. But God saved them. God covered them. So we will see them in heaven. So I found this, and I don't know how important it is. Uh, I did some math on it. Remember the, the, in the uh, story, let me see here, where is it? <laughs> the story of Hezekiah was about to die and God says, I'll give you another 15 years and Hezekiah wanted some proof. And so God said he'd move the, sun, the uh, dial 10 degrees back. Well, 10 degrees equals 40 minutes. The Isaiah, uh, and Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So, 
Now, I was just curious. Remember how I did the math on four minutes a day? Sorry. Four minutes a day over the course of 364 days came up to the extra. Because, and the reason is, you know that a day is actually 23 hours and 56 minutes long. It is not 24 hours long. Um, so the extra four minutes a day that we take each day, because we call it 24 it's actually 2356. If you multiply that by 364 days in a year, you come up with your extra day and a quarter. It happens every year. If they would change the clocks to tick a little faster, maybe, I don't know how they would fix it, but um, because they want it to be 360, that's uh, 24 hours in a day, um, it becomes 365 and a quarter. And I think this issue has been going on since the beginning because we know that uh, Enoch was 365 years old. Uh, when he was taken so i think this this is something for us to investigate so i did the same thing on the uh, 10 degrees and i found out that 10 degrees equals 40 minutes so i decided to do this math with it so it's 40 minutes right and you multiply that by 364 days and that's what you come up with 14,560 minutes and you divide that by 60 minutes so you know how many hours you have, and that's how many hours you have, 242 hours and 666667, which I thought was an interesting number. And then you divide that by 24 hours to know how many days it is. I didn't put that in there. I wish I had. But you divide that by 24 hours, and this is how many extra days you wind up with. 10 days, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Now, this is pointing directly to Noah. Oops. This is pointing directly to Noah because remember Noah, let's see here, uh, where is he at? Noah, whoops, you see down there at the bottom, 23 hours and 56 minutes. So Noah goes into the ark on Heshbon 17 right here. Again, I just started doing the math from the head of the year and I discovered that Heshbon 17 lands on Halloween every single year. He's in the ark for one year, up here in green, you can see it, one year and 10 days. He comes out of the ark on November the 10th, sometime during November the 10th. 11-11 is his first day in the new world. Why is he on the ark for one year and 10 days? And that's what I found. If you move the sundial back <clears throat> 10 degrees, it's 40 minutes, and you work it out throughout the year, you come up to... What I showed you was 10.1111111 days. And ironically, that lands on 1111. That's just, that's insane. That, that worked out. I can't, uh, I can't state for certain that that's it. You know, if that's what it is, I don't know. It's a little, little thing I found. So um, there's some mathematicians out there that could uh, work on that better than me. So I got to get off here. I am whew, cold sweat. Uh, I wanted to get you that information. Uh, we are barreling down to uh, September the 11th, September the 10th. Um, could be September the 14th, uh, the day God created time. Could be September the, uh, let's see, when did God create man? September the uh, 16th, when he created man. September the 17th, when he rested. I mean, it could be any one of these days. It's very prophetic what's happening right now with everything that we're seeing. Um, so, uh, the way the advice I say is, is just keep looking up. We're getting closer and closer. We still don't know exactly when, but Amos 3, 7 promises that we will. And, uh, one of these days, I mean, like what Paul, uh, Patrick found over at Hourly Watch, one of these days, it's just going to dawn on us what it is. It's probably written right in the Bible and, uh, we'll decipher it at, at one, at some point just prior to it. And I'm thinking like September... September the 11th is, what, eight days away? I'm thinking seven to three days away, we're going to really see something huge. But we did see this. Patrick came out, you know, on, with his sign on August the 11th, exactly 30 days before September the 11th, the first day of creation. So eh, that might that might have been it um, for those who see. So anyway, let me get off here. Repo Man 64 like, comment, share, and subscribe. And go to... Uh, Go to subscribe to those channels that I mentioned because it's very important that this information stick around after the rapture because the saints are super important to God. 
super important to us. We pray for them. Pray for the Jew. Always in your prayers, when you pray, always say something to protect the Jews. Always say something for them. Um, God loves them, even though they're even harder headed than these people that believe in flat earth and this and and pre terrorists and all the, the 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 weird things that people come up with. Um, even though they are more hard headed than that, God still loves them, and God is going to bring them into the millennium and uh, repopulate everything. So uh, just. Keep going forward, and if anybody sees anything, hears anything, don't be afraid to put in the comment section. Uh, go into the Discord and uh, the timeline. The timeline, Sister Sandy made it. You will find it on End Time Studies, End Time Dash Studies dot com. End Time End Times or End Time Ugh. End Time or End Times Dash studies.com and you can go in and look at the timeline for yourself and I still didn't work out Moses correctly um uh, I just don't know exactly those 40 days 40 days and 40 days I know there's three of them I I do know that Moses lands uh he goes to up into the mountain and uh he lands also on the day of atonement just like Jesus does when Jesus fasted Moses fasted so that was a picture of Jesus fasting for 40 days so Anyway, I'm going to go rest. I will chat with you guys again later. Hopefully my head's clearer by the next time. And hopefully it's uh, it's only eight days away. So I'm just keep watching. Something, something's about I'm just waiting for the other shoe. I said that to Eper Symphony. She sent me an email. Just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Just that solid confirmation. Damascus, what will it be? War in Israel. What, what's it going to be that uh, shows us that this is it? This is it? 100%. Right now we're at 99% with all this. Not the exact day because we don't know. <laughs> we don't know September 11th, September 15th, which is uh, Rosh Hashanah, September 17th, that last day of creation. And also, um, well, Yom Kippur is on September the 24th. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the next couple of weeks. So just keep on watching. So, all right, we'll chat with you again later.